Hello, welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. A few quick housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, a couple more tonight even, so be sure to sign up for more if you haven't done so already at the same place you signed up for this one. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash WACAC, W-A-C-A-C. -A -C. All right, I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I'm going to step out of the way now and turn it over to our first presentation from the University of Pittsburgh. Thanks, Russ. And hi, everyone. My name is Kelsey from the University of Pittsburgh, and I am regionally based in California. So right in your backyards, I am here to help in any way that I can. So if you are not familiar with Pitt, um, I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about the city of Pittsburgh, what we have to offer um, for you, uh, why it's a wonderful college town, then about our academics, and then I'll finish with some fun stuff and application updates. So we are an urban campus located about three miles from downtown Pittsburgh in a neighborhood called Oakland. Um, this is one of my favorite views at campus because you can see the leaves are changing colors. So we do experience all four seasons in Pittsburgh. Um, and we get the best of both worlds on campus with some green space that you can hang out outside. It still feels like a college campus in certain areas, yet we are very urban um, and have that hustle and bustle of the city going on right around you. That tall building you see is our Cathedral of Learning, so it's classrooms, professors' offices, um, and is kind of the heart of our campus. But the city of Pittsburgh overall, we consider our campus as well. So even though we're just located in one tiny section of the city, we really encourage students to take advantage of everything the city of Pittsburgh has to offer. Um, we want you to go out and explore the food um, and restaurant scene, arts and entertainment, um, especially pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID. There will be lots of fun things to do around the city with sporting events, concerts, Broadway shows, um, and our students really get to take advantage advantage of that. Also, when it comes to academics um, and what you're studying, we have tons of Fortune 500 companies and different organizations that you can do internships with um, and get a job with very close by. You do get free public transportation, so it's easy to navigate around the city as a Pitt student. Um, and when it comes to academics at Pitt and probably why you'd be looking at us, we have over 100 different majors for you to look at. Um, and they are housed in five freshman schools. Um, so we have our School of Arts and Sciences, which has over 60 different majors, our Swanson School of Engineering, which has 10 different majors, um, and which is really cool because you actually explore all 10 of them in your freshman year before you officially declare one, um, and none of them are impacted. We have our College of Business Administration, our School of Computing and Information, which is our fastest growing school, uh, our School of Nursing, um, and rumor has it um, being announced soon, there will be a sixth school come this fall. So stay tuned for that um, if you are interested in Pitt. But we also wanna give you a lot of academic opportunities to support your education. We feel at Pitt that you are gonna learn so much more by um, a hands-on application and really applying what you learn in the classroom, um, outside in the city and within your career. So we do have a guaranteed internship program for all students of every single major. So we want you to get real world job experience. And this also includes co-ops for a lot of um, our STEM based majors, which will be more popular. Um, we do offer undergraduate research, just under a billion dollars every year um, to students. We are top five in the country um, as a tier one research institution. And this does not have to be our health science major. So that is a very popular one to do undergraduate research, but you can be a music or an art major and still do research if that's something you're interested in. If you are interested in the health sciences, however, in addition to research, we do have six teaching hospitals directly on our campus. So this is gonna be a great opportunity for you to shadow doctors, nurses, surgeons, anyone within that health field, um, especially for our nursing students, those clinicals being, with, clinicals being within walking distance is gonna be a huge perk. Uh, we also have hundreds of study abroad programs. So as long as the country is safe to send you, we can find a program, um, major related, not major related, um, internships abroad, anything you are interested in to give you that global aspect. But some of my favorite parts about being a Pitt student is going to be that student life and things you do outside the classroom. 
We have around 19,000 undergraduate students. So it's medium to large size. But we definitely have the school spirit of a really large school. Our students are proud to be in Pittsburgh. They're proud to be Pitt Panthers. Um, and you see that all throughout campus. You see that in our sporting events. So we are division one sports. Our football team plays in the same stadium as the Steelers. Um, and it, within our hundreds of student organizations, you will get involved and make some of your best friends while still being proud to represent Pitt all throughout the community. We do guarantee housing, so especially coming from out of state, um, we want you to know there will be a place for you to live on campus if you choose, um, as well as lots of really fun school traditions um, and local things happening nearby that our students love to be a part of. And before I finish up for the evening, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how to become a Panther. Our application opens in August of your senior year, and we are rolling admission. So I strongly encourage you to apply as early as possible, as this does play a big benefit to you within the application process. And we are test optional for every single program, so it's up to you if you want to submit test scores or not. Um, we have three different applications you can choose to apply through um, and after your application is completed, you should get a decision from us in about six to eight weeks. Um, so you might find out really early in your senior year if you have a spot at Pitt or not. One unique thing about our application is our graduate school guarantees. Um, we have 18 of them. They're an awesome opportunity for you to think a little bit more long-term if this is something of interest to you. They are not binding and just an added incentive. So with that being said, I'm going to share my contact information. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me, uh, and I'm more than happy to help. So enjoy hearing from my five other uh, wonderful colleagues. Thank you very much. And I will remind all of you that if you have questions for any of our uh, presenters, just use the Q&A button. You can ask your question at any time. It's, if it's for a specific school, just name the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from Penn State University. Thank you so much, Rush. Uh, Russ. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining uh, myself and my wonderful colleagues here um, this evening or this afternoon for you. Uh, my name is Isabel. I am an admissions counselor here at Penn State, as well as the recruiter that works specifically with students in California. Um, I am a native Californian. I grew up in Santa Rosa, up in uh, Sonoma County, um, but I am based out of Pennsylvania now. I live in State College, which is out uh, where our main campus, University Park, is located. So if you have any questions, not just about Penn State, but about uh, East Coast living versus West Coast living and all that, please feel free to ask myself or any of my colleagues here that as well. But I am obviously here to talk about Penn State. We are a top 1% world-class university, um, and we are in the Big Ten Conference. So what that means is that at Penn State, you can expect um, you know, a, a big campus, that very traditional big college campus atmosphere, uh, lots of school spirit, big time sports. We are division one in our University Park campus and then our smaller campuses have division three sports with club sports and intramurals at all of our campuses. Obviously, we're a very highly ranked academic institution, but we also pride ourselves on offering our students a very vibrant and active student life, as well as unique opportunities inside and outside of the classroom. Um, and all of those things and more combine to make those of us that work and study at Penn State so proud to say we are Penn State. So just a few kind of quick facts about our institution to introduce you a little bit. Um, we are a research one institution. We allocate, this number is outdated, actually over $1 billion in research expenditures annually, which means that we're able to offer uh, undergraduate research opportunities to our students in all fields of study as early as freshman year. Uh, we focus very heavily on career services. We have the largest alumni network in the world and we want to keep that, um, that distinction. So we may, want to make sure that we're producing graduates that are very happy and very successful at Penn State. Uh, we have over 300 study abroad programs and over 275 different academic programs. We're most well known for our College of Business, Engineering, Nursing, and Science, but we have so much more than that from the Performing Arts, Liberal Arts, Education, Earth and Mineral Sciences, Information Sciences and Technology, Agricultural Sciences, and so much more. We also have one of the top public honors colleges in the country, which is our Schreier Honors College, um, which is open to students of all majors. And we also have other discipline specific honors programs as well. 
Um, we have over 1200 different student clubs, organizations and activities. So we make it very difficult for you to not be involved outside of the classroom because we can tap into all of the different interests, passions um, and curiosities that you might have that you wanna take advantage of when you're in your college years. Now, um, let's talk location a little bit. In case you're not super familiar with where our institutions are, this is uh, Pennsylvania highlighted in red here. So we are definitely an East Coast city, uh, East Coast state, I'm sorry. Um, and looking at a uh, close up of Pennsylvania, you'll see here all 20 of our campus locations. Our quote unquote main campus, or our largest campus is University Park here, but you will see that we have 19 other campuses spread throughout the Commonwealth. Um, and one thing that's very important to know about Penn State is that we are one university, we're just geographically dispersed. So one application, one transcript, one diploma. And what our different campuses are able to provide our students is a lot of variety and um, really options for you to cater and design your Penn State education the way that you want it to be. So whether you're looking for a very small campus like that's 500 students large or a very large campus like University Park which is 46,000 students large, we have that and anything in between. We have campuses that are located in college towns like State College at University Park. We have campuses located near big cities like Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. We have campuses that are in rural locations, far up north like our Barron campus up there. Um, so a lot of different options like I said. And we also offer a really unique two plus two plan, which is essentially for almost all of our students, unless you're in a direct admit program, you can spend your first two years at any campus and then automatically transition to your ending campus that offers your degree program to finish your degree. It's not, a it's not a transfer process. You don't have to reapply to your ending campus. You'll just change campuses. You're already a Penn Stater from day one, and it's as easy as that. So ask me some questions in the chat if you would want to know more about any of our locations or that two plus two plan. Now, as far as becoming a Penn Stater, our application process is very straightforward. We are test optional through at least 2023. So all we will need is an online application. You can either apply through our My Penn State app or the coalition or the, co uh, or the common app. It does not matter to us, whichever one makes most sense for you and submit a self-reported academic record. And that's it. We don't require any essays. We don't require letters of recommendation. Very straightforward. We do have an early action deadline of November 1st um, and applying and finishing your application by that early action deadline will always give you your best chance of getting admitted to Penn State. So always, always recommend applying early action if at all possible. After that, we'll continue, obviously, to, to accept applications and evaluate them. But as we get later and later in the admissions process, it does get much more competitive to be admitted, especially at University Park. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> Um, and I actually got through the presentation quicker than normal. So here's my penultimate slide here. I just want you to know that you have a really great opportunity to join a huge network. In fact, the largest network um, of very successful, very happy, very passionate alumni at Penn State that are very excited to open doors for you and welcome you as a Nittany Lion. So here is our contact information. Again, I work with California students specifically. So please feel free to email me at any point if you want to know more about Penn State. And I look forward to your questions in the chat as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The Q&A is where you can ask questions of our representatives. Just drop a question in there anytime if you have one. If it's for a specific school, just make sure to name the school in your question. Up next, we will continue our tour around the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania with Lafayette College. Thank you so much, Russ. So welcome to Lafayette College, everyone. We are named, as you might uh, have guessed, after the Marquis de Lafayette, who is more than just a figure in Hamilton. Uh, so he was a young man who, in defiance of his king, set sail, helped the colonists win the Revolutionary War. He was a suffragist, so in support of women's rights. He was an abolitionist, uh, so you know, against slavery, and a guy who just really got after it and stood up for what he believed in. And our students today are much the same way. You're looking at an aerial view of Lafayette College. We are in the very eastern part of Pennsylvania, so literally right over that bridge is New Jersey. We are a Division I school. Uh, we play in the Patriot League, um, one of the smallest Division I schools with about 2,600 students. 
Uh, Lafayette College is, um, is a place where we are a community without question. So if that's of something uh, that's of importance to you, then you may want to um, think about us. We are a school that um, is what we call an applied liberal arts school. Well, what the heck does that mean? That means that the students are taking what they're learning in the classroom and applying it to real life. So we have four divisions, the division of engineering, the social sciences, the natural sciences, and the humanities. We do not admit by major, we do not admit by division, we admit by you, the person. So quite literally, you could come to us undecided, or you could come to us thinking that you wanted to be an art major, and if you took introduction to engineering and fell in love, we would say, welcome to engineering. We have 51 different majors. Our average class size is 18.6, and the faculty to student ratio is 10 to one. As I said, about 2,600 students and over 200 clubs and organizations. Um, as I previously mentioned, we are a Division I school. We play in the Patriot League. If you were to Google football rivalries, the rivalry is the Lafayette-Lehigh rivalry. These two schools have played each other more times than any two schools in the nation. They played their 150th game uh, in 2014 to a sold out crowd at Yankee Stadium. Empire State Building lit up on one side with Lafayette colors and on the other side with Lehigh colors. So if you're looking for a smaller school with big school spirit, then that is Lafayette. In, during rivalry week, there will be posters all over the place. Um, so some of them are very funny, some of them um, you know, somewhat irreverent, and they're just, it's really fun to have that kind of a rivalry. Um, so how does it work in terms of uh, money and uh, scholarships? Lafayette College is one of the few schools in the country that meets 100% uh, percent of demonstrated financial need, both for our domestic and our international students. We require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile if you are a US citizen. If you are an international school uh, student, just the CSS profile. We have full and half tuition merit scholarships plus marquee merit award uh, scholarships ranging from ten dollars to $20,000. We are also an Army ROTC school, and of course we have um, athletic scholarships as well. As I said, we are located in Easton, Pennsylvania. For you, the Californian, it's an easy direct flight, depending on where you are, into Newark. So a lot of people will think, oh, it's in Pennsylvania, it must be Philadelphia. No, a direct flight into Newark, which is approximately an hour and five minutes from campus. To orient you, you are looking at the city of Easton. Up on the hill, uh, up here is College Hill. That's where the main campus is. This um, building right here is our downtown arts campus. And that's where our film and media studies students, our um, theater students, and our fine arts students take their classes. To walk from College Hill to uh, this roundabout takes you about 15, 20 minutes. If you've ever picked up a Crayola crayon, you have uh, a connection to Easton because we are home to the Crayola crayon. Also, downtown Easton is all very locally owned, which I love. I too am a former Californian like um, Isabel. I grew up in Southern California, but I raised my daughter in Sacramento. So um, I am also on campus, but definitely know that the, Downtown Easton has this feel of, if you've ever been to San Francisco or from San Francisco, kind of a neighborhood there. Um, home to a big garlic festival when we're not in a pandemic in October and a huge bacon festival where about 100,000 people will converge on Easton. Really fun city, they'll have bacon of all kind, I, um, including vegan bacon, but I like the real stuff. Um, this is our downtown arts campus that I showed you on the other picture. Um, so, you know, why might you come to Lafayette? Well, because you're going to be gainfully employed afterwards. Your chances of getting into uh, medical school and um, law school really, really high. Um, if you are entrepreneurial, the Dyer Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship has loads of events, including Shark Tank-like competitions that you can compete in. Um, so we are on the common application. We too are test optional through 2023. We require your transcripts. Um, if you decide to submit your test scores, definitely that. 
We look at demonstrated interest. It's really important to us. So the fact that you're here tonight and if you go to any of our virtual events, great. We are also open now for touring, um, which is terrific. So we do a holistic review of your application um, and we are regular decision and early decision school. As I said, lots of, um, lots of events going on right now, including these interviews, which are open to you. And Russ, thank you. It's on to Drexel, I believe. Yep, thank you very much. And I'll remind everyone a couple things. One, use the Q&A to ask questions of any of our representatives for a specific school. Just name the school in your question. Secondly, check out the chat. That's where the representatives are send you, sending you info, like contact information and links and other things. So you can check that out in the chat. Up next, Drexel University. Thanks, Russ. Hi, everyone. My name is Cheryl Tevlin. I am an Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Drexel University, which is located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, as you can see behind me, we have some lovely green spaces on campus. What you cannot tell from this picture, though, is we are actually right in the city of Philadelphia. So it's definitely a very urban environment. City streets run through our campus. You'll see taxis going by. There are food trucks all over the place. You can see the skyscrapers behind you. So uh, we're about a 15... A 20, 25 minute walk to the very center of Philadelphia where City Hall is located, but there's great tr public transportation all around the city, very easy to navigate. Um, also, one other note about where we're located, we're in a section of the city called University City uh, because the University of Pennsylvania is right across from us. And then the University of the Sciences of Philadelphia is on the other side of Penn's campus. So all together, there are over 40,000 college age students in our neighborhood. So there's a lot going on, a lot to do. It's a very fun location for college. Um, a little bit more about Drexel's facts and figures. We are a large private tier one research university. Our undergraduate population is about 15,000 students. We have students coming from all over the world. Um, one quick note, even though we're on the larger side for a private school, maybe not in context of say um, a CSU or something along those lines, but for a private school, we're a little bit bigger. But what you're gonna notice on the slide on your screen is that our median class size and our student to faculty ratio are a lot smaller than what you might anticipate. Um, and that's really intentional on our part. We have a strong focus on experiential education. So we do a lot of hands-on project-based learning, which is not something you can do if you're in a large lecture all of the time. You might have one or two larger lectures depending on your major, but that's really going to be it. The rest of your classes are going to be much smaller in nature. We have over 80 majors across 15 colleges and schools, so there is a lot to choose from. All of our programs are direct entry. You apply to your major of interest. You know right away if you've gotten in. You start taking classes in that program from the very start. If you're not sure what you want to study, don't worry. There are other options for you. If you say, I know I really want business, but I'm not sure which particular major in the college I want. You could do undeclared business or undeclared engineering. We also have a first-year exploratory studies program that allows students to take classes around the university and figure out what's best for them. I want to go back to that idea of experiential education because I think it's really important. The idea behind it really comes from our founders. We were founded in 1891 by A.J. Drexel, who was a financier and a philanthropist. You may not have heard of him in context of business, the business world, but I'm sure you've heard of his protege, who was J.P. Morgan. Um, but A.J., when he sat down and started to create the plans for Drexel University, said that he wanted students to get an education that wasn't just good, but that was good for something. So that use inspired idea is very much behind everything that we do. We want you to learn not just by listening and by reading, but also by doing and engaging in your industry. That's going to impact your classroom experiences, but then also is going to take shape through our co-op experiences. I know you've heard a little bit about co-ops from some other schools, but for us, co-op is a six month break from your classes where you are working in your field of interest, typically in a full-time paid job. So it's like a more in-depth version of an internship. It gives you the chance to make sure you actually like what you can do with your major. That's important. If not, you can come back, change your program. It gives you the opportunity to build a strong resume and connections in your field while potentially earning money at the same time. But the real benefits are that you graduate knowing what you want to do. And that really uh, brings about some great outcomes for our students. You can see our students do very well with getting jobs, getting into grad school, med school, law school. But what I want you to really take note of is that students are getting jobs in their field and they're satisfied with their jobs, which is not something that a lot of recent college grads can say that their first job they actually really 
are satisfied with. And it's because our students have already sort of had a test drive of their education for their future career. They really understand themselves and what work environment is going to be best for them. Outside of the classroom, our students are incredibly engaged. We have over 350 clubs and organizations. We're division one for sports. We have performing arts and Greek life. All of our students live on campus for the first two years. So that's a requirement. We are not a commuter school in the city. We are a residential university. Um, so we have tons of residence halls for students. You'll have the opportunity to really get involved. And one other thing I want to note about opportunities for involvement um, really come within the city itself. We do a lot of community service at Drexel. In fact, one of the classes you'll take in your first year is Civic Engagement 101, and that talks about issues that the community faces and how we can be better partners within the community at Drexel and have an impact. Part of that is a small 10-hour community service requirement where you actually can go out and see how we can make a difference within the city. So that's something important to note about us. It's really easy to get around in Philadelphia, as I mentioned, good public transportation, including walking to the train station, which is right across from one edge of campus. It's a 20-minute ride to the airport to get home. When it comes to the application process, we're on the Common App and the Coalition application. We do full holistic review. I review all applications from Northern California and Nevada, and then any homeschooled students from anywhere around the world. I'll drop a link in the chat in a few minutes where you can find your contact person for Southern California. Um, we are test optional for the next two years at least. That's for our undergraduate programs, scholarships, honors program, research program. The only program that is not test optional is our eight-year combined BA, BS, MD program because the med school requires those test scores. But just know that we are looking far beyond what we see on your app, your uh, transcript or your test scores if you decide to send them. We want to see how you as a person are a good fit for Drexel and how we are a good fit for you. So just a couple things to note there. So I'll go ahead and put my contact information on the screen. If you do have questions, feel free to reach out. I'll drop some great resources in the chat in a minute along with my contact info so you don't have to worry about writing that down furiously. But for now, Russ, back to you. Thank you very much. And Cheryl just mentioned the chat. Check that out for the information that the representatives are sending you. And if you have questions, use the Q&A to ask questions at any time. Up next, we will hear from Gettysburg College. Helps if I can unmute my picture too. <laughs> so with that being said, hello, good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you are at the moment. My name is Mary Smith. I am one of the senior associate directors from the Gettysburg College Admissions Office. And I'm gonna actually, when I get a chance, throw some information into the chat as well for you to, to check out a little bit about facts, figures, quick information, and some fun videos. So it is following very quickly after some of the information from my colleagues. But without further ado, Gettysburg is in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Yes, that world famous town that changed the course of our nation's history. I love that my colleagues have all been talking a little bit about our, our different history across the, the Commonwealth. Uh, Gettysburg is pretty integral. We get about 3 million people visiting our small town community of Gettysburg every year because of such a pivotal point in American history, including presidents, politicians, and people from across the, the spectrum, if you will, from all different interests and backgrounds, which makes it a very unique place to live and learn and be a part of, and gives us some unique academic experiences as well. This highlights a bit about Gettysburg College, so I'll give you just about five seconds to read through that. Probably my favorite part of this is what I alluded to in our location is that we are about an hour and a half north of Washington, DC. We own the Eisenhower Institute for Public Policy and Leadership. Yes, that is after President Eisenhower. He actually retired to Gettysburg. And so we are the only undergraduate only institution with a presidential public policy institute. We have offices a block from the White House as well as on our campus in Gettysburg. Gettysburg really is only 20 minutes north of the Maryland border. So if you're flying in, which by the way, we have our own transportation network, but if you are flying in say from the West Coast, you might be flying into Baltimore Washington International Airport. We'll come pick you up, easy peasy, door to door service. It's very convenient. And a lot of our students are coming from a variety of different areas across the country and across the globe, 40 states and 40 foreign countries. Over 120 different clubs and organizations, lots of things to be able to get involved with. 
both from a curricular perspective with over 65 different academic majors, as well as co-curricular perspective. Everything from division three athletics to fine and performing arts, music is huge and may have been the reason I chose to go to Gettysburg back in the day in the 90s, but there's a lot to be involved with. Community service is really important to us. It is actually one of our hallmark programs. We own and operate the Center for Public Service that has service opportunities both on our campus, in our community, and as a global perspective. We run trips all over the globe, including we've done some this year, which has been interesting in a pandemic. But those are some, some highlights. Probably my favorite picture in here is our first year walk, where we actually walk through the town and go up to the National Cemetery to hear a reading of the Gettysburg Address. Again, talking about that, that role of Gettysburg in our past, our present, and how will you change the future? It's pretty exciting. One of my favorite traditions, actually. I alluded to our Eisenhower Institute. These are our Eisenhower Fellows. I alluded to our Conservatory of Music and the reason I chose Gettysburg. These are some great, unique programs at Gettysburg. We also have the Garthwaite Leadership Center, which is a wonderful leadership center, if you will. Some unique opportunities for a liberal arts and sciences college. Overall, in terms of majors and minors, our students get involved with business. They get involved with political science. The natural sciences are particularly strong for us with many of our students doing hands-on research as early as their freshman year. It's actually incorporated into that intro bio course. So after your first year, you can already say, I've been doing research with my professor for almost a full year. Our students are published. They're attending national and international conferences. They're getting into great medical schools as well as law schools, as well as MBA programs frankly, because of the hands-on experiences they are having from early on. This screen shares some of those statistics, some of the new programs, and some of the fun facts. Our new major in business organizations and management studies is quickly becoming one of the most popular. I myself was a business management major back in the 90s, one of my best experiences, even though I chose Gettysburg for music and still did music and still did education but our students really take advantage of all of those different opportunities. Study abroad is huge for us, with over 60% of our students going abroad at some point in their four years, and everything counts. Students are able to apply their financial aid, their scholarships, and take that with them to their abroad experience. We even cover your airfare. So there's no reason not to study abroad. I always encourage students to do that. And we have these great, Dissection tables, that's a human cadaver lab, actually. So our students interested in the med field, they, again, get some pretty cool hands-on experiences. One last slide relating to admissions and financial aid. Gettysburg does offer wonderful financial aid options, as well as great scholarship options from a music perspective, from a STEM scholars perspective for students interested in the sciences and underrepresented backgrounds, and for students who are wonderful students. As you apply to Gettysburg, you're automatically considered for those merit scholarships. And we look at everything. In that holistic process, we do look at all the different aspects of your application. Your transcript carries the most weight, but it is really looking at everything. As some of my colleagues have mentioned, we are also test optional, but we've been test optional for about 15 years. So frankly, it's not new for us. It's one piece of the puzzle. There's my contact information, which I will also once again throw in the chat after this. Thank you so much for being here with us, or if you're watching the recording, great to, great to see you, and I hope to connect with you in person sometime soon. Thank you very much, and I'll reiterate, questions can be asked using the Q&A, and check out the chat for the great information that the representatives are sharing with you there. Up next, we'll hear from Mullenberg College. Hi, everyone. Uh, first, thank you all so much for, I've, I'm learning so much about all of my colleagues' schools, and it's really exciting to see the state of Pennsylvania represented so well. And thanks again to StriveScan, too, for, for hosting uh, a place where we can all gather and learn more about this exciting process you're all going through, which is do, conducting your college search. And we're really excited that Muhlenberg is a part of this for you. So I'm Ashley Swingler. Um, I am one of the um, international and domestic admissions counselors. So I have the privilege of traveling typically internationally for Muhlenberg. And I sure do miss um, traveling around 
around Asia, but so excited to be with you here virtually in this space. Um, if you'd like to keep in contact with me, that's great. Uh, we also have a regional West Coast director. director. Her name is Becca Larson. Um, I'll also drop her email in the chat at the end of our session today. Um, I also put some helpful links just to our virtual brochure that you can take a look at while we're chatting today as well as information for our virtual visits. We will hopefully be introducing some in-person visits for prospective students very soon, um, but we do have a robust opportunity of online events, including an open house that's happening this weekend. So if you're, if you're free on Saturday, join us over here at Muhlenberg College. Um, so really quickly going through some quick facts just to kind of set the tone for who we are as Muhlenberg. Uh, we're located in the beautiful city of Allentown, Pennsylvania. That's actually Pennsylvania's third largest city. So you have Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and then Allentown. Um, and as you can see on the map, we're very close to Philadelphia and New York City, giving you, again, great options, you know, as somebody who works with students who are coming from all over the world, who are in a very convenient location to fly in. Um, and we even have our own international airport here in the Lehigh Valley. So we love ABE. Uh, it's small and mighty. And so you might be able to find some flights directly into there as well. And we're very connected to the community in Allentown. In fact, we see that about 90% of our students are doing some sort of community service in the city of Allentown, making this a campus that not only is connected to each other, but to our city around us. And as somebody who, um, I'm, I'm not a California native, as a lot of my colleagues are here tonight, but I actually um, am a transplant from South Carolina. So after graduation, I moved here to lovely Allentown, and I've been here for about seven years. And it's been really cool to see this whole area go under a huge transformation and urban revitalization. Um, so bringing a whole slew of new shops, restaurants, entertainment venues um, in the city of Allentown. So it's a really great time to be not only um, a student, but also young professional in, in this area for sure. Um, so more about campus, we are just under 2,000 students, making us a very warm, welcome, and cozy campus. You'll really get to know folks around here, and we are hail from 35 states and 20 countries. Um, so again, as a part of my role, really recruiting students not only from across the United States, but across the globe. And we're a highly residential campus, meaning that about 91% of our students will live on campus all four years. So it's very um, common that students will live in dorms, but we also have um, really cool apartments and mile houses, which are my favorite, which is called our Muhlenberg Independent Living Experience. You can actually live in a house um, that is through Muhlenberg College, so kind of taking a little stress off that rental situation. We pride ourselves, again, on being a warm, welcoming campus. We also have very small class sizes, so you're going to see an average class size of around 19 students, student-faculty ratio of about 10 to 1. So again, our community is really just about getting to know folks, really having advocates for yourself, both in your community um, and in the classroom as well. A part of living at Muhlenberg that's very special is our food. We're ranked number one in the state of Pennsylvania for dining, number 17 in the country. Um, so if you at all are interested in campus food as being a part of your decision, you are definitely should be looking at Muhlenberg. We're very spoiled. Um, we actually have a fully kosher integrated dining hall, which is fabulous. Um, you know, Muhlenberg itself is a Lutheran college, but since have since our founding have become highly religiously diverse, including our population of Jewish students is actually makes up a third of our campus. Um, so just a fun fact there as well about Muhlenberg. Uh, we have tons of student clubs and activities. Religious life is obviously um, something that's very important on our campus, but we also have many different sports teams. We are a Division III school, so we have 22 men's and women's uh, Division III sports teams, as well as many accompanying intramural sports. Um, we have, and I've been kind of going through the chat, so I've already highlighted some of the, the great programs in terms of our political uh, affiliations and group affinity groups on campus. We have a large 
undergraduate research program. So we see that about two thirds of our students are graduating with some sort of research or internship experience. And one of my favorite parts of Muhlenberg is our performing arts. Um, we are nationally ranked for theater. Um, so we're very lucky to have over 50 theater and dance productions throughout the year. Our small college, who would, who would have thought, um, has so many programs that we offer. But lastly, I want to kind of draw your attention to the very bottom part of the screen. I actually have put one of the most special traditions about Muhlenberg there for you, and that is our red door. The red door, and obviously see, you see red as one of our signature colors. This is um, definitely one of the parts of Muhlenberg that is so special because we hold the door open for each other, and these doors are a symbol of welcome on our campus. Um, just briefly, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the admissions process before we have to go. Uh, we're on Common App. We have been test optional for over 20 years, and um, we require very little um, in terms of extra materials. We just really um, want to get to know you. So schedule an interview, engage with us. Um, if you want to learn more about our majors and programs, please take a look at the links that I provided and can't wait to engage with you in this process. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask all of our reps to come back on camera and, and uh, turn on their microphones so we can do a quick little round robin Q&A that we have in the five minutes left in this session. And quickly, I will ask the first question, which would be, what one piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll have you answer in the same order that you presented. So we'll start with the University of Pittsburgh. One piece of advice I would give for you going through the college search process would be to have fun um, and enjoy the process. So it can be stressful, um, but it also can be really fun and you can you know, make a lot of cool trips out of it or your virtual tours or connect with some awesome people. So have fun and enjoy your senior year while you're in that process. Penn State. Yeah, I would definitely say take advantage of all of us on your screen right now and our counterparts in all of the institutions you're interested in learning more about. Um, don't just rely on like websites or your friends for information because sometimes um, that might not be the most accurate. So reach out to the counselor that's working with students in your area, introduce yourself, ask for advice, like what, what should you focus on in your application because each institution is different. So take advantage of the fact that we're all here to, to, to help you. Lafayette College. Sure, there are over 3,000 schools in this country. So, you know, you are going to not have heard of some that could be the very best fit for you. So just know that in this journey towards college, you're going to find lots of great places that you love that love you back. And just, um, I guess, take a deep breath and know that you will bloom where you are planted. Drexel University. Everyone, so I'm going to reiterate a little bit of what you've heard and expand on it. So use your resources. That's very important. But the resources I'm going to suggest you use are all of the great virtual opportunities that schools from all over have added. Now you can see, um, you know, classroom information, listen to professors talking in ways that you haven't been able to do in the past. Uh, and there's a lot more depth. And then also use your college counselors. They are great resources for you. So to Kathleen's point, you can talk to them and say, there's this school that I'm really interested in. I think it's a good fit. Can you tell me any other schools that may be similar? And they might be able to tell you schools that you've never heard of that could be an even better fit than the one you have on your list already. Gettysburg College. Such great advice and great wisdom from my colleagues. I'll just add one important note. This year, you're a college senior. You're also a college applicant. But first and foremost, you're a high school. Let me correct that. You're a high school senior. So as a high school senior, enjoy being a high school senior. Enjoy this final year with your friends, your family members, your teammates, your colleagues in all of your different clubs and activities and take advantage of that. Eke every last drop out of this senior year because it's that next year right before college that means your academic experience as well. Do your best academically. Take this year to be a college, a high school, <laughs> a high school senior, not just a college applicant. The application process is going to happen. It's going to move forward, but enjoy this senior year of high school. Muhlenberg College. All right. Thanks so much. I think, um, you know, obviously same lines of uh, 
I think preserving your mental health, Zoom fatigue is so real. And doing all of these virtual sessions can be very overwhelming. So I encourage you to pace yourself. Um, but also really take advantage of those personal connections. So obviously signing up for events like this, but on those schools that you're really interested in, take a deep dive and have a conversation with someone because I think that face-to-face -face interaction is really important. Well, thank you all for sharing that great advice and also sharing all of the wonderful information about each of your schools. I wanna thank all of our attendees for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. There are a couple more coming up tonight. Be sure to sign up for more if you've not done so already at the same place you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Once again, thank you to each of our representatives for presenting during the session. Thank you very much. And have a great rest of your Monday. Take care.